Now, another key component when we're talking about influences, uh, we, we talk about external parental family influences. Of course, this cartoon makes light of the fact that in many cases, parents oftentimes are pointed to as the key uh, people that influence their kids um, and, and are to blame. Uh, there was a there was certainly a movement in time during during uh, psychology where it always came back to parenting. Freud, for example, was one that that did a, uh, a disservice to many parents because he said that it, you know if the parenting job hadn't been done the way it would, the kids wouldn't be nearly as neurotic. But the other thing to keep in mind here is when we talk about it is that families are not only uh, uh, influential in kids they're also uh, cultural influences as well they're part of that they where does culture meet uh, childhood development well it happens in the home and so um, cultural influences uh, are key as well now the thing to keep in mind um, when we're talking about this is we have to define our terms a little bit first of all uh, culture and Culture, if you're defining culture, um, <clears throat> we have to talk about a number of different things that are shared by a group of people. So first of all, it's shared by a group of people or an ethnic group of people, uh, shared by a group of people. And the key here is that it's common to this group of people and typically as a result it is transmitted from one generation to another and uh, they're transmitted uh, inter generationally <clears throat> and that is part of the key when we're actually defining culture uh, German culture is very different from American culture. Uh, Japanese culture is very different from even South Korean culture. Each one is shared by this each group of people. Now the, the thing, what is shared? What is shared here are uh, ideas, uh, values, uh, attitudes, values, attitudes, um, about uh, acceptable behavior and a variety of other things, um, and uh, ultimately traditions themselves. And you probably notice it m most dramatically, I think, because uh, America is influenced by Europe. It, it is filled with European immigrants. Um, and so our traditions and ideas and values are very similar in that regard. But we see a bigger change or a bigger difference, if you will, uh, when you go, go kind of uh, dramatically different. For example, if you were to travel to an African culture, you would find uh, huge differences in values regarding time uh, or even uh, the traditions about in terms of church, for example. Um, our, one of our pastors just came back from visiting the South, uh, South Sudan. And in their churches, hymns were still very popular, still very present in their worship services. In America, we have, in a lot of cases, we've moved, depending on the church you're from, but we've moved beyond um, hymns and so forth. But it's uh, ideas, values, attitudes, traditions, all of those are part of the, the scaffolding, if you will, that are are part of what we refer to as the the American culture. It is it provides the framework on which or within which we operate. We really can't see the world um, outside of our framework itself. Now, the other thing to keep in mind when we're talking about cultural influences is is uh, this notion that's referred to as norms, and norms themselves govern people's behaviors. Now, let me, let me give you a great example. Uh, last fall, uh, members, let me write this before I launch into another subject, uh, members' behaviors. Uh, last fall, I was doing a group called um, 
group leadership process, leadership and process, process and leadership, I'm sorry, group process and leadership. And one of the biggest challenges of the group was to establish norms for behavior, like, for example, how authentic people in the group would be. Now, which means that if one of the group members seemed to be less than authentic, then usually there would be some consequences to the lack of, of authenticity. Uh, so the, the reward and the consequences are part of what um, determine uh, changed behavior a lot of times. And in the group, uh, the most approval uh, determined behavior. The most uh, approval, or, or the, the yeah, the most approval gained from the group was when people took risks at being authentic. You see that probably even in your uh, D groups is that um, there are people that vary in their willingness to come out and be vulnerable and transparent, and that's very much a part of norms and and how they're set in the groups can be set in in a uh, D group. They can be set in something even bigger, like a church. Uh, they can be set in uh, a school or a school classroom. Uh, it can be set in a city. And you get the idea, and even larger up to national, even international ideas here. So it, when we talk about norms, uh, th that's part of the key. Now, the other thing is, is that these norms uh, and the, in culture, culture can change, and it, it, there's dramatic changes in culture uh, over the last 40 to 50 years. Even the um, intrusion, if you will, of, of technology has changed our culture. Um, for, for example, a great example would be the la new language as a result, let me put technology in here, um, as a result of technology, we now have uh, things like uh, uh, like this, and most everybody will know what that means. Um, we, we have the ever-present sad face. We have, um, uh, you can, we have LOL. Uh, we have a variety of, of language components that have been reduced all been reduced as a result of technology, namely texting, um, reduced uh, communication. And, and it's extremely efficient uh, to be able to say a long phrase with only three letters, but with reduced communication comes uh, a reduced level of um, intimacy as well. And and uh, you know it's always funny to hear my kids talk about talking to people when in fact they're actually texting someone. 